Business to business workflows. Shopware has a rich suite of business to business functions, as well as numerous third party extensions, allowing Shopware to deal with the full range of merchant business to business requirements. These features include bulk ordering, quick reorder lists and tools, restricted access controls, budgets and contingencies, portal customization, parent child customer accounts, quote management order approval workflows, business-to-business -business listing page grids, reporting tools, and customer-specific pricing and price lists. I will now demonstrate some of the features and facilities of the business-to-business -business suite that is available as part of Shopware's Evolve and Beyond packages. Now, there are lots of ways of configuring B2B uh, functionality, but we've, in terms of stores, but we've actually set up a number of sales channels, one of which is a B2C channel, Orion Fashion, and one which is a B2B channel, all run from the same, um, uh, the same interface. The B2B store has a different default customer group, customer group that's associated to it, and it's, it has different languages and uh, different um, currencies set up as well. If I now look at the front end, you can see um, my umbrella business is called Omnicore, or the B2B business is called Omnicore. So there's a fashion store as well, but as we are the B2B business Omnicore. And I have, in fact, set up a customer called Simpsons Corporation, and I've logged in the head of Simpsons Corporation, that is Homer Simpson. Uh, and as the, uh, the parent account holder, he has the ability to define, A, his company structure. So, in fact, he has two substores a Portsmouth store and a Guildford store, and a uh, headquarter element as well. Within those stores, he can define who the contacts are, what their billing addresses are, shipping addresses are. He can define budgets and contingents. Go in and do these in detail. He can also define role, permissions, and visibilities, as well as specific order lists and budgets, as well, uh, uh, precise budgets for each of these entities. You can see a range of statistics, both on orders um, uh, and order positions. You can do, um, we can group them differently. We can uh, alter the, uh, the report date. And we can filter it down to specific stores or locations or substores. You can see an overview of orders. And who this, the actual person who made that order was. Also see what we call order clearances, which is where Substores have made orders that they don't have permission for, uh, and that therefore the account parent has to clear those orders. You can create order lists so that the, that standardised reorder lists can be created. There's a fast order facility, both via file upload or by a, a product number and quantity uh, application. There's a summary screen for all, all the offers that he's made or the requests for a quote effectively, what offers means um, he's made uh, from Omnicore and, and the status of those offers. And he can define specific order numbers that match other products. So where there are different SKU numbers uh, that he's holding to the SKU numbers that, um, say, Omnicore use, he can. Uh, it doesn't have to adopt the manufacturer order numbers. He can uh, hold one against the other. So let's look closely at some of the permissions that have been set up here.
let's look at the permissions set up in the Portsmouth store. So we can see that the, uh, that the budget for the Portsmouth store is £89,157 and it's a month per month and that it's actually own, hasn't used any of it so far in this period. Obviously, we can adjust this, as you can see. And there is also a notification uh, facilities as well. There are also contingent assigned to Portsmouth. that he is only allowed to, to order £10,000 each day and that he is not allowed to order from the category homewares. So now let's log in as a poo and see how this plays out. As you can see, I have a vastly reduced dashboard. I can't see the full company structure, but I can see order lists and I can see the offers. Um, I can and see some of the facilities that that Homer, as my as the at the HQ element, has allowed me to see. So why don't I go ahead and make an order? And just because I was told I can't, I've decided that I'm going to order something from Homewares. Immediately as I add it to the shopping cart, we can see what the restrictions that are that are applied to me and where I have exceeded those restrictions. If I proceed to check out, again, I am reminded uh, of what my restrictions are and where I, I've exceeded them. And therefore, I have a, an opportunity to request clearance from Homer, which I do. This order is now waiting for clearance. If I now home, um, log back in as Homer, I can see this order awaiting clearance. And I can accept it or decline it. The order will then be made to Omnicore. If we now examine how the offer workflow uh, operates, now either Homer or one of the sub shops can ask Omnicore for an offer on any particular order. So if I add a couple of things to cart, let's say 10 of those, I can request an offer where I can say I desire a particular discount and therefore submit the offer request. Omnicore then receive these this offer request that we see here. You can view the offer and accept the offer or decline the offer or make an alternative offer. You can also view obviously information about the B2B debtor. So we're going to accept the offer in this case and the relevant notification is made back to Simpsons Corporation and the order proceeds. So another piece of functionality we should look at is uh, the grid functionality that exists on the on the front end. So again, whenever I'm looking uh, at a category in the front end and I'm a, uh, a B2B customer, um, I can see things in table view. This is important because um, unlike in B2C, uh, B2C, where the aim is to narrow it down to a single product to add to basket, here where I may be doing uh, a stock refresh, there may be multiple amounts and then the probable result is that I want multiple things in my basket uh, from any particular order page. Not all B2B customers require the flexibility of having budgets and contingents and would be better served with a more straightforward interface. To that end, Shopware has an easy mode. 
that offers a less complex type of B2B account. Any B2B customer that hasn't already had roles set up can be adjusted to be in easy mode. Now, when a customer is set up in, uh, in this mode, they still have the opportunity to have various sub-accounts, albeit in a slightly more straightforward, and simplified format. They can still have order, creation, and management functions, but they don't have the complexity of budgets and contingencies. Mm -hmm.